Hey everyone, Jackie Stratum here from the Painted Pinto. Hey, I want to welcome you guys to my Facebook page and my new YouTube channel. Uh, if you haven't been there, please go like it and hit subscribe. I'm trying to boost my new members and so forth. But today I want to talk to you about staging. Staging is a huge thing for furniture artists like myself. And it used to be I didn't have that big of a problem um, with my old residence. It was uh, very... Uh, fitting for what I do in the furniture world and um, but when I moved into a shop in town that came a little bit more difficult so one of my ideals that I had was uh, putting up and creating some wall murals so in shopping around um, I did find a couple that I liked and actually I bought one and put it in my loft in my um, my apartment because it had very high ceilings and just a plain white wall and if you're familiar with my Facebook channel or my furniture it's kind of rustic lodgy so I did this forced um, mural in the bedroom and it made it really dreamy and I love it so and I've gotten lots of compliments on doing it and it was fairly easy so today we're gonna talk about wall murals um, the ins the outs the goods, the bads, and how easy it is, and just kind of put one together and see how it looks at the end when it comes to staging your furniture. And I hope you enjoy. Uh, today, I will tell you that I've only used Wall 26. I'm not paid by them. I'm not a representative for them. So this is an unbiased opinion. So I hope you stay tuned, and we'll get to creating this wall, this space behind me. Um, it's actually going to be to the second part of three murals that's going up in my shop. I've already got one up and I'll share that one. That one was kind of my experiment one that I really, really liked. So here we go. Okay, so here we go. Um, what I chose was two different styles of wall murals. One is a, a grunge brick and the other one is, I call it, an old world brick. And the illusion that I'm shooting for is here you see a lot of old buildings that, um, gosh, they're 100 years old, whatever. They have old windows in them or had old windows in them that um, weren't energy efficient, whatever, industrial. So what, what they would do was they would build them in with what I call this grunge, just basic brick, take the windows out and install the brick. Um, so that's kind of what this illusion is going to that I'm trying to create is a really old wall that had windows in it at one point in time, industrial, it's been filled in with um, a little bit more modern, um, newer brick. So what happens is I wanted to go with mainly a bigger window pattern because I'm, was, I'm going to do a stencil of my company logo on that brick because I do like that old vibe of, um, you know, you'll see a wall mural on the outside of a building. So I thought, well, it's great advertisement for me, and it kind of fits into my decor and the style is in doing the TPP logo on that brick. So what I did was I bought three murals, and this is what you will see here. And I do believe they're like 66 inches by 96. I know that they're like five and a half foot tall. So I wanted more of the grunge brick to show and less of the old world brick and that's on the bottom um, and down the sides so it took three murals all together to do this so I first laid them all out kind of looked them out over looked at the pattern and got them laid out now if you look at this you will see that there is at one portion the bottom or the top whatever you want to call it it's a darker brick so I was going kind of for a ledge there under that old um, what would have been the window as to show as a window sale and then on the outside you will see it kind of looks like supports the main wall supports columns whatever you want to call that's made out of brick and I tried to do that as a recess now what I just showed you there was on the back of each one after I laid them out I went and I took a permanent marker and I and I just wrote on the back the number of which one kind of um, top one top two top three top four, top five, top six, and then the same thing on the bottom starting with B1. Now, of course, it's best to work left to right so you can kind of 
match up your lines. Now, if you wanted to do this very same mural to, that I just did and you wanted the whole um, outside support with the recess of the window um, to, to look like a recessed window, you're not going to want those that first section all the way from top to bottom. You don't want that next section to actually be um, able to butt up and match the brick. You kind of want it to actually offset and that way it looks like it's two different bricks. So I did do in this video how to make that um, look a little bit more in depth, 3D, whatever. But as you can see here in this video that I'm putting the, um, the grunge brick up and it's longer than the other um, old world brick. So I started on the, actually this is starting on the right even though it looks left which is great for the video and what I'm telling you. Simply because I did start on the right because I've already got a mural up to the right of what I'm doing right here now. So. Yes, I'm on a ladder, yes, I'm a little shorty, and yes, I am in Birkenstock sandals. So, I like living on the edge. <laughs> but I didn't allow in this, I don't allow very much. I, I hate to measure, so a lot of it's just eyeball. But I found that these murals are very forgiving. And what's so wonderful about this material is it's a pill and stick. So, it's pretty matte surface. Um, it goes right on. If you need to make adjustments, you just pull it off, start over, go right back over it, put it down, push out the wrinkles with your hand. It doesn't take any soap, water, you know, anything like that, a squeegee. You could use something if you wanted. I wasn't that technical. It seems to work just fine. So there's your another number for the next section and up I go. And it is a great leg workout, I'll just tell you that. So make sure you got halfway decent balance and um, you know, just be careful getting up there on the ladder. Give somebody your phone number and sorry, message them and say, hey, I'm fixing to spend um, an hour up on the ladder. <laughs> totally funny. But anyway, it also the process doesn't really seem to take that long. Um, start to finish, I would say with the layout, the numbering and, and installation and cutout, there is a little bit of cutout. There was probably an hour and a half um, of doing it simply because I'd done it on the wall before. So, But it's not that big a deal for all the results I feel like that you do get from, um, from this. So my struggle was I moved into the shop and all the walls were white and of course you know my style my style is not um, just plain ordinary whatever it's going to be more industrial more rustic um, just ranchy lodgy whatever you want to call it so this can work in a combination of just anything but these are wall 26 murals and they do have um, larger murals if you just want to go with just something basic one pattern and not try to manipulate and make two or three different. I thought it was fun myself, but you can get it. I think it's like 110 inches by like 140 inches, which is a really um, a big mural. I have that in my loft and um, it covers a great surface. So this is, as you see, it's just butting up, rubbing out, pulling loose, matching up, getting it all just right. Hopefully not having to climb up the ladder more than once when you get down there, but hey, sometimes it happens and here I go again. So there you go. So um, this stuff I actually found because I did paint on it. If you're doing the chalk paint on it, it goes on really easy, um, blends really well. You can wipe off with just a, um, you know, a paper napkin and water and voila. I did not seal um, my painting that I did on it because what I did is, of course you've got seams and it does really well if you see that grunge. I did a really good job, I'm not petting myself on the back or maybe I am petting myself on the back. Did a really good job of um, matching it all up. But when you get to this old world brick on the bottom, um, it does have a lot of color variants in it. So. It did take uh, some painting to just kind of blend the seams in, which was was a lot of fun. I hadn't done that before, so I will do it again. This is going to be, like I said, um, most likely three sections along this wall. I have a long wall in the south um, of my building, 
and this is your roll number two. So right now we're finishing up on the top part, getting that all done, and making sure that everything's even, getting it all lined up, smoothed out. And I don't trim anything up until after the end. It all goes up, even the top and the bottom. I didn't even trim off the, the barcoding or anything off the bottom. I just kind of overlapped that and just kind of left it like it was. Um, it's not that really big a deal. And I love change so much, so the chances are that it's gonna come off in six months. So, okay, so what I'm doing here is on the bottom is I trimmed right above that, and you can see that what I wanted to do was with a window ledge. I wanted to make it a ledge, give it a little bit more dimension, so I left a concrete edge on top of that brick, kind of like a seal, a brick seal, um, that would be on a window ledge. So now I'm installing the bottom portion. Those are matching up really well. There is a little bit of um, color difference there, which we will fix that here in just a little bit with paint. But as you can see there, it has darks and lights. I matched it up where the light part of the brick kind of blended in a, a lighter portion. What's so fun about this brick is if you step back away from it, and you've done your color blending, it actually, on camera, makes it look like those bricks are uneven and protruding, which is super cool um, way of showing an extra dimension. So I think this is the final piece that's going on. I did overlap it, on, like I said, on the top. We're getting it all measured, but you can see right here the variations in the colors where the seam is on that last piece. But I'm gonna show you how we fix that here in just a moment. Here we go. So all I did was um, I came up with some Dixie Belle paint which I use in all my furniture and it was super easy, makes easy cleanup. And I am actually just going over with highlights where part of that um, one seam was a lighter on one side and it ran dark. And I'm just kind of blending those darks over into the lighter side. Um, and I did actually go with a lighter gray and vice versa going back the other way. So, but this is just blending to make sure both of those seams look seamless that you can't tell that they were um, two different pieces and doing a little bit of red. Of course, there's some rusty nail in there. Um, I've got, um, let me see, I've got several different colors in there. I think it was actually like five. I should have actually shared that with you guys, but it would be hurricane gray and a rusty nail, a little bit of rustic red, and um, some um, white swan actually is what I use from DIY paint. So, uh, but it actually, and cowgirl coral. Sorry, it's not cowgirl coral. It's fire starter from DIY. So there's actually a combination of DIY and Dixie Belle. I'm not following one paint line or the other. I like them both for whatever reason. So, but anyway, so here we go, blending in the brick, trying to make all that kind of cohesive there together. So, and uh, I think it turned out pretty well. So you actually get to see at the end, um, my staging element that I just finished up uh, for an auction on July the 23rd that I'm gonna do with one of my pieces, um, Miss Lulu White, who was a famous um, brothel owner in the New Orleans area. So, but she will be, Lulu will be my very first piece to stage with this wall and um, also stage some of my photography that I've done. Um, and there's our finished product. Now, doesn't that look just like an old building? It's kind of rambly, um, settled, staging elements look good behind it. Um, and there's a video of the finished process. I don't have my logo in that second section yet, um, but there's some of my photography. And here is Lulu, brought to you courtesy of The Painted Pinto.